You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 37 of Movies Are Awesome, the show all about candle making. My name is Nathan Pottle, and thank you for joining me today. This week, I'm talking about Knives Out. I went to go see it last week, and this is a movie where I definitely needed time to think about it for a bit. Does everything make sense? Is this murder mystery everything that it was like promising that it would be? And now, after thinking about it, I'm sitting down, going to talk about it here. As per usual, with my reviews, we're going to talk non-spoilers first, and then we'll get into spoilers, because obviously I don't want to give away who the murderer is in this murder mystery. Uh, first off, I'll give you a very vague description of the story, because if I give anything away, I would just hate myself that people would be like, no, the story was ruined for me from that podcast guy how dare he well and i don't want to do that so basically a wealthy author is murdered and this inspector guy a uh, kind of a well-known famous detective private investigator guy uh his name is benoit blanc he comes in and he is trying to figure out what happened who killed this guy why is he dead and that's where our story begins it is this movie was directed by ryan johnson uh if you're not familiar with who ryan johnson is he directed classic movies such as looper brick and most famously the last jedi now whether you like the last jedi or not should not sway you from going to see this movie i i am one of the people who do enjoy the last jedi i think it's good and I think that this movie is also very good too. I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. This movie has an insane cast. Like, listen, listen to the, some of these names I'm about to list off here: Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Anna de Arma, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, and Christopher Plummer. Those are the top six build names in on IMDb. Um, the only one there who's not really super famous is Anna de Arma. If you're not familiar with who she is, she's probably most known for her role in Blade Runner 2049. She plays the character Joy, um, Agent K's virtual girlfriend. And I think she's really good in that movie. She kind of has a smaller role to play in Blade Runner 2049. And she is she's good in both movies. I, I really enjoy her. She's a good performer. And I'm, she's actually going to be with Daniel Craig in the next Bond movie. I think she's the Bond girl. Was it called uh, No Time to Die? They just released the trailer for it this morning as of the time of this recording. Uh, the trailer will be a couple days old by the time this comes out. We'll also have a new trailer for Mulan by the time this episode drops. So that's very exciting. Make sure you keep an eye out for the Mulan remake. Getting a new trailer for it tomorrow. Uh, when this comes out, it'll be yesterday, so hopefully you've already seen it. If not, check it out. Let me know what you think of that Mulan trailer. I'm very excited for that movie. When I make my uh, most anticipated movies for 2020, I'm sure that's going to be on the list because I'm just really looking forward to it. But in any case, talking about the cast. The ensemble cast for this movie is really the big draw. We got a lot of big names, a lot of talented people getting to play off of one another, and it's just, it's just so good. I think the editing of this movie is also superb. The way it's cut together between, like, flashbacks of what happened and multiple things happening at one time. There's a scene in particular near the very beginning of the film where um, Benoit Blanc is investigating. He's questioning everyone about things. And the way it cuts from person to person and then back and weaves through is just absolutely fascinating. It's very well put together. You follow everything that's going on, but at the same time, it's like it's very impressively done, and I like it quite a bit. It's unfortunate, though, because not a lot of people went out to see this movie. It's opening weekend domestically. It only made $26.8 million. Uh, it's not 
amazing, but at the same time, a lot of people are still going to check out Frozen 2, which was the number one movie at the box office this weekend. Um, so Ryan Johnson was just not able to get enough people, and I'm sure that there's people out there who are like, The Last Jedi sucks, so I'm not gonna go watch that murder mystery movie. That's just, it's not the way to look at things. If you didn't like The Last Jedi, that's fine. I can understand why people wouldn't like it. I think it's pretty good. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't go check out Knives Out or, like, any other work. If you're not interested in murder mysteries, that's an acceptable reason to not go see this other murder mystery. But just because you don't like something else that the director has done doesn't mean that he's not going to be able to deliver a film that you might really, really enjoy. This movie's um, score is also pretty good. I don't know who scored it. I should have looked it up, but that's that's on me. It definitely has that mystery vibe to it. Very mi mysterious is like the best way I can describe it because it's a mystery. So you got the mystery vibe. You've got um, some more exciting musical beats for when the action picks up a little bit. This movie is not action heavy it is a lot of people just talking so if you're looking for big car chases and everything that's not gonna be this movie you're at the wrong place it is just a lot of people talking and a lot of mystery and just you as the viewer trying to put the pieces together and figure out just what is going on there is there is one car chase though it's interesting that i brought it up there is one car chase um it's nothing spectacular it's just your basic one car is going fast and another car is following it that is also going fast that's i just gave a very very disappointing description of what a car chase is um but that's that's how it is in this movie it's it's not it's not that exciting at all other than the lackluster car chase i can't even really think of many other um issues that I have with this movie it ac actually I, I can't think of one right off the top of my head this movie it's hmm I think it's two hours and 10 minutes long or two hours and 20 minutes and it takes it takes a while for things to get going like that scene that I talked about at the beginning where he's asking questions and they're laying the groundwork for the mystery that scene is quite long I really enjoyed it because of how it's edited and all put together but it is a significant chunk of the movie and you're just kind of waiting for all of the chess pieces on the board to be set up so that you can then move forward from there, find out where the pieces are going to move, what's going on, and then you can see the whole picture and finally, finally put everything together. So once we get to that point where everything is set up and the story starts to move forward, that's when it gets super interesting but that first little bit where everything is just kind of being set up, that can drag a little bit. I think some people who are not super patient and wanting to get into the interesting stuff right away might not enjoy that. But the payoff is definitely worth it. Getting through that little bit of exposition is it's just fine. Like by the end of the movie, you're not even worried about how like it was slow off to start because it ends really, really strong. I'm trying to think if there's anything else negative that I have to say. There are some characters in this movie that are really underutilized. One of the actors, um, he was one of the kids in It. I think he played Bill in It. He's in this movie. Um, he has like two lines, and other than that, he just stands in the background. So characters like that who have almost no play in the story do it begs the question of do they even really need to be there or should we just keep it to the main players of the characters like the main 10 like i think that i think there's more family members than that in this story but do we need more than that in the story and at what point does it just start to get a little bit extraneous of having too many characters when they have no effect or impact to the story at all now he does have a little bit of a moment where he gets to say like i heard this person saying this like any other character could have been given that line 
And so I, I feel his character was a little bit unnecessary uh, reflecting on it. So, and there are a couple other characters. I don't want to say exactly who, so I'm not giving things away. That character is just a really good example of just someone who I feel doesn't really need to be in the movie just because he has nothing to do. He's just, he's very much a background character. There is one part of this movie that references the fact that there's a murder mystery going on and the house that they live in is really extravagant and kind of eccentric the way it's put together and there's mysterious stuff going on and one guy makes a reference to the movie Clue. If you've never seen the movie Clue, oh my goodness, you should probably check it out. Not because it's amazing, but because it's just, it's so entertaining. This movie is nuts. It has alternate endings, so for people who, like, if you want this person to be the killer, you can watch this ending, or a different person, a different person. Clue is kind of a crazy movie. Uh, it absolutely doesn't make any sense, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I watched it with my wife just earlier this year again. I do believe it's on Amazon Prime. If you want to check it out, go watch Clue, and then go watch Knives Out. That, that would be a really fun a double feature, I feel, watching Clue and then Knives Out. I think I think that would be be pretty good. I think that's gonna be pretty much it for non-spoilers. There's a whole lot of spoiler stuff that I want to talk about, so why don't I just roll right into that right now? So here's my official warning: it is spoiler time. So obviously, first thing I want to talk about is Chris Evans' character. Now his character Ransom is his nickname yeah ransom he doesn't come in until a little bit later and because he came into the movie so late it automatically told me like he either has a lot to do with what's going on or absolutely nothing and it turned out that he had a lot to do he was he was the killer so that's uh but like at the same time he wasn't the killer now this whole mix up is absolutely crazy. So just as a brief recap, or if you have not seen the movie and you don't care about spoilers, then I'm sorry, I've already I've already wrecked it for you, but here here's just like a brief recap. So he switched labels on the medicine, hoping that the nurse uh, would would give his grandfather the wrong medicine. And when she gave him the wrong medicine, he would die from it. And then she would be written out of the will because she killed him. And then he would get his share of the will again. That was his initial plan. It's not awful. It makes sense. Set, set her up to kill him. But then she didn't actually kill him. She gave him the right medicine. And he found that out from the, the blood toxicity report. So he found out what was going on. And then... Once he discovered that she didn't actually kill him because she just recognizes what the medicines look like and then she recognized the labels later so she thought she killed him and then she didn't. It's a whole a whole big thing. Then he switched to the labels back for some reason and then he had some kind of other... Then he like decided to team up with the nurse so that she would get all the money and then he would get some just on the side and he, she, he would help her get away with it. And then it just kind of like spirals out of control and more people are lying and people are telling the truth and the nurse character, she can't lie at all. And one, one thing that I find is super funny is every time they talk about what country Marta is from, they say a different country and like they just can't agree on what country she's from because they're just ignorant white people and I think that's hilarious but going back to Chris Evans's plan it's super elaborate and kind of crazy and going back to think about it does it doesn't make sense and I think from a perspective of Chris Evans character is so selfish and so kind of off kilter that it does make sense that this is something that he would do and then obviously in the end he doesn't get away with it Marta says that the nurse is alive and he admits to killing her but she's actually dead and so she throws up on him because if she tells a lie she throws up and then he tries to kill her and it's like the little fake knife and 
Chris Evans goes to jail and it's absolutely crazy. Lots of things going on. There's, there's so much going on in this movie. It's so layered and because everyone is kind of equally suspicious and it's what's really interesting is that Marta ends up kind of being the main character throughout this movie. I thought that Daniel Craig was going to be the main character, but they really focus on Marta. And I think that not focusing on the inspector almost makes the inspector a suspect from our point of view. And because the movie reveals to us what happens with Harlan's death, like an hour into the movie, we see Harlan kill himself. And then it's revealed like all the medicine switch. So we actually believe that Marta killed him and then Harlan killed himself. But then we're just wanting to see how everything comes together. Like, is Marta going to get caught? And so the movie then plays us from that perspective. Will Marta get caught? Will she go to prison or not? Will she get all the, of the inheritance? What's going on? And then as we get farther into the movie, when things with Chris Evans' character is revealed, then there's another layer there. Okay, Marta didn't kill him. It was like ransom's plan all along and all of these different things are happening and it's just it's really interesting to watch to see how it all plays out i do i definitely want to watch it again like and then knowing where everything goes seeing what i can pick up on throughout the movie uh, especially when we get to parts like the will being read obviously ransom knows that everything was going to marta because um harlan told him so he just sits down and is ready to watch the show and he knows his family's going to flip out. So that's why he like, he just laughs and gets up and leaves and he's everyone talking to him before the will reading about, oh, it's going to be just fine. Like, like it's the best for you that you're not getting any money. So when, when it's revealed that no one's getting any money, he just finds it so hilarious. And, and I think that plays really well into his character. I like it a lot. Speaking of the family, I want to talk about the family for a second. Their entire family dynamic and their interactions between each other are great. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis and her husband, can't remember that actor's name, but he's in Watchmen. If you've been watching Watchmen on HBO, he's the um, the police chief who um, is, is in charge of the police there in Tulsa. And he, he's pretty good in the show. I, I like his... Uh, his role that he plays but his interactions with Jamie Lee Curtis and it's revealed that like he's having an affair and it needs to be revealed and Harlan wrote that letter and when the, he opens the letter and it was blank he was like oh like he was just bluffing but earlier in the film Jamie Lee Curtis said like oh me and my dad had a secret way of communicating because like he was quirky and that's just kind of how we how we figured it out so then at the end of the movie where she's got the blank thing and she heats it up, invisible ink, it's it's a it's a good reveal, and then she's like, You're cheating on me, you hit the road. I don't I don't like you anymore. Um Michael Shannon's performance is really good as well. Christopher Plummer, obviously, he's a Canadian treasure, and who who doesn't like him? He's he's great in everything he's in. I don't think I've seen Christopher Plummer in anything where I haven't just really enjoyed his performance ever since the sound of music back in 1965 just really really good and especially when we get to see christopher Plummer interacting with all the family members like when he's fighting with ransom or um talking to jamie lee curtis's husband or telling michael shannon that he's gonna be fired and has to build his own thing right michael shannon I I really like him a lot. I think he's super talented. He's really good at playing a bad guy, but I think he's he's more than that. He's he's very nuanced. He not so much good at playing a bad guy. He's good at playing like a tortured soul who doesn't know like where his allegiances lie. And I think that really comes into play in this movie when he's like like he want does he really want to be the head of the publishing company or is that just something that his father brought him into like do, does he want to be his own man or just continue what he's been doing the whole time it really is uh, an interesting concept 
and and I like his performance quite a bit in this film. I guess I didn't even talk about Daniel Craig's performance. Why don't I do that right now? He was amazing. It look it's really feels like his performance in Logan Lucky was just a warm up for this movie, and he really leans into the accent and his observant skills. Like he's very much like a Pierrot or Sherlock Holmes or um, Miss Fisher or Father Brown, any of those other famous detectives. He's like a pleasant mix of all of them to create this new detective character, and I really like him a lot. I would love to see some sequels, uh, The Further Adventures of Benoit Blanc and his uh, CSI KFC going around uh, solving murders and like just having having a great time and smoking his cigars and flipping his coins and and going and going around just saying his uh his catchphrase i suspect foul play how was that was that all right i'm, I'm gonna try one more time. i suspect foul play kind of a foghorn leghorn voice he's got going on there um yeah daniel craig was great i would love to see more of this character um if Ryan Johnson has more ideas to continue on and make this into a franchise, I'd be very okay with it. Or even if he wants to pass off the character onto another director and say, like, here, now you make a murder mystery within, like, this, with this character that I created and just kind of go with it and see what you come up with and then pass it off to another director saying, like, here, now you make a murder mystery. I think that that would be the right way to do this, I think. Just... Find someone with a great murder mystery idea, plug in Benoit Blanc, give it kind of this like unique style and flair that this movie has, and just let let the franchise blossom and grow into something unique and original that we don't really have in movies. Like we've got Sherlock Holmes movies, but they're they're Sherlock Holmes movies, and they get to be a little bit of the same again and again. And that's fine. I enjoy Sherlock Holmes. But I would like something new in the murder mystery genre. We don't get a lot of this kind of movie. And I would really like to see more from it. Especially from this new character as portrayed by Daniel Craig. So I think that's going to be it for today's episode. Knives Out. I really liked it. I recommend checking it out. If you've seen it, I'd love for you to let me know what you thought of the film. You can find me on social media on Twitter at Poddle Nathan and on Instagram at Poddle Productions. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my show. You can subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, a whole bunch of other places, and let a friend know if you like the show. Spread, spread the word. Thank you so much again for listening, and if you have nothing else to do, go watch more movies.